tipping weaker. Oh, clever. Huh? Even though I'm on this side, just want to stop the traffic going past. Yeah, no worries. You just let us know and we'll go out there. Right, welcome to the video folks so it's Friday the 22nd of September and as you can see behind me we finally have a roof structure I mean I couldn't have picked a worse week to try and land a roof we've had high winds torrential rain we've had lightning strikes in fact one of uh, one of our plots on one of our sites was hit by lightning and blew a big hole in the roof and actually caught fire fortunately no such dramas here but we landed the roof on Tuesday uh, we had the chippies here for Tuesday and Wednesday torrential rain Wednesday but they soldiered on and got it done so it's now Friday so I've got some bricks and blocks here on Thursday and Terry's had an attempt at building the gables today but let's have a quick look round and I'll run you through it so we had like a trailer crane in sight so it's a 45 ton crane uh, and it's got about a 24 meter boom so logistically it was quite tight we had to have the crane a certain distance away from the power cable across the road um, and we had to pull up the uh, truss lorry parallel to the site entrance and then fortunately the crane managed to really uh, get right in the corner which gave them enough distance from the crane arm to the power cable to prevent any arcing uh, otherwise he would have blew himself up and probably most of the town fortunately that didn't happen so relatively expensive to get the roof on to be perfectly honest with you so the crane is like 500 pound for half a day so we had until 12 o'clock uh, two chippies for two days uh, the plastics alone the black plastic i'll show you that the fascia and the soffit uh, was 900 quid plus the carpenter had to go and pick up a couple more bits so probably about a thousand pound um, and the roof trusses themselves just for the main roof was 2200 that's not including the attic trusses for the garage so um, it is quite a substantial roof and it's got a little hip on the end as well so it's a bit more timber in there but i'll just give you a quick tour around the brickies have been here but the weather's been atrocious today but um i've got roof tilers booked and wanted to crack on but we'll have a little tour around and i'll show you a few bits and pieces so have a look so we've got black fascia and soffit as you see on this end here so this is the hip end here so obviously this gable stops you can just see a wall plate up here so our block work will finish tight under here these are the straps ready to fix the block work when it's eventually through but yeah i wasn't that keen on the black fascia and soffit and, and the barge board but i happen to think it's going to be really good because a lot of debris comes off the trees and stuff so i think black is a very good option and it's going to be less maintenance going forward so like i said pretty substantial roof really uh, they've had to cut all the valleys in ply the valleys you know there's quite a bit of additional work for this hip down here which i believe is a barn hip i thought it was called a dutch hip a good friend of mine kindly pointed out that it's not so i stand corrected nice little feature gable on the front as you can see got a bit of ply running up here to try and stop the water coming down uh, the fascia and the soffit uh, because hessian doesn't really stop it but this is the main gable on the front so across the road i don't know whether you can see it but there's a power cable that runs all the way across here fixed to that pylon just opposite the um, street light so the crane had to be a certain distance from there so we had to pull him right into the site so that's the site entrance there and we had to get the truss lorry across and he had to try and keep that crane as far away from there as possible so i have to clean all the fascia and soffit down there's nothing you can do unfortunately it's just the way it is but we started this gable end here as well so got a few courses of bricks on so we get up a bit higher and then we put the table lifts on so again a laddered gable so this is a ladder 
hence the ladder going up. Um, I actually prefer this gable look. I think the laddered gables actually look a bit smarter and give a bit more character to your house as opposed to like a normal traditional cut brickwork and you know your cloaking or your roofing cloak is sitting on top of it. Um, don't particularly like that. So the roof structure is on, I'm really pleased. I go away uh, towards the end of next week. So uh, I wanted all the gables done, finished, ready for the roof tiler the following week. So roof tiler is a week Monday. So as I said in my previous video about the joist, I had 42 days to basically get the joist in the dry, technically. Um, and I'm gonna be a little bit shy of that, to be honest, We're a little bit over that, so, sorry, I should say. So probably about 50 days a week over. And then look at the weather. I mean, couldn't have timed it any worse, to be honest. But there's a bird cage in, um, for the scaffolding that which will remain there until the fountain batten is on uh, and the tiles are loaded out so that will offer some protection to the flooring itself but i'm super pleased the chippies have done an absolutely amazing job once again so thank you to mikey chambers and his two lads andy and tom so i'm going to get out of this rain now um, but next week uh, we'll get the gables finished uh, and then the following week we will be felt and battened and then we can let the fun begin and I can design my kitchen. So thanks for watching. Sorry about the short video. Peace and love. I'll see you next time out.